Hi, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair, and today I'm recovering data from an iPhone 14 Pro Max that's flat dead. It had a large weight dropped on it, and it cracked the back. And uh, it worked for a little bit after that it was reported, but he dropped it a few more times after that, and now the phone is no longer turning on or giving any signs of life. So I haven't done any diagnostic to this phone yet other than remove the screen, so let's start the process together. So my very first diagnostic step I take when I'm working with the dead iPhone is to take my DC power supply probes here and touch them to the battery connector and prompt the phone to boot by pressing the power button. In this case I have zero amperage draw before I prompt the phone to boot, which is normal. And after I prompt the phone to boot, I also get zero. So I'm clicking the power button right now and nothing's happening. I can click it, nothing, and I can hold it and still nothing. Um, so this could indicate a few different things, but normally it's going to be um, some power rail that's short. Um, it could also be like a loose boost coil, and it could be a few other things. So the next thing I need to do is take this motherboard out of the housing, and uh, I'll start diagnosing with my multimeter. So I've taken this motherboard out of the housing, and I normally just check the easiest power rails first. And uh, I believe we have access to the NAND power rail, so let me see on our board view software if we do. And if we do, I'll check those first. Okay, so if I pull open my board view software, I actually do have access to the power rails. Um, there'll be usually three different power rails powering NAND. So this will be one of them. This will be another. So will be another, looks like we have more than three power rails on the 14 Pros. So this will be my 1v2 power rail. I know that because it's also powering EEPROM. Yeah, so I'll just measure these four capacitors. So one, two, three, and four. And I'll see if uh, I have a short on any of those lines first. If not, I'll probably go straight to splitting the motherboard in and, and checking out the inner components. So I'm getting 0.26 in diode mode on this capacitor, which will be normal. 0.27 on this one. Are those the same line? So that shouldn't be the same line, but it's very close. This is 0.269, this is 0.27, and I have a 0 0.002 diode mode between them, which means they're almost fully short to each other. This is 0.41, and this is 0.269 again. So I'm not really sure how NAND power works on the 14 series, but it's pretty interesting that uh, these values are so close to each other. These two on the end are full short, 0, 0.000, no anything between them. So that's full short, but they're not the same line. But at least in this case, I can see that this line goes through a resistor and into this line. Um, so if this is like a, a zero ohm resistor, then, then that's fine. They can be, you know, uh, possibly actually the same line. Um, but this line was very, very close as well. Oh, okay, so this one's also going through a resistor into that line. So I guess that's what the the reason why they're so close to each other. So that, that seems normal actually. I would expect actually one more power rail. I guess this is the last power rail that's actually a full power rail. It threw me off a little bit. And this one I'm not getting an easy spot to measure at. So I think I'll just go right ahead and split this motherboard now. So I'll take my heating platform.
and your temperature might be different but I set mine to 235 and my platform actually can't hit that number it only gets to about 226 or 227 before it starts to drop again so right at that point I'll use my hot air to, to finish the job off and to split it completely so I'll just wait a moment while this heats up and I like to use no nozzle when I'm splitting these boards with the hot air. So I'm at 223, that should be good enough for me to start heating from the top. And it should live very quickly because it's almost ready. And again, your temperature might be different. I never calibrated this and uh, I know there's some variance. This actually came right off. So nothing's jumping out at me, but first thing I'll do is check my CPU and make sure there's no cracks in it. I'll wait for this uh, solder on the edge to not be liquefied, and it's not. I don't see any cracks. So now I'm going to make sure that the amperage draw when I prompt to boot is still bad. It is always possible that something on the lower board was causing the issue but the upper board will boot by itself it will just give a three minute reboot but it will boot up it's one of these three lines I can't ever remember exactly which and I'm still seeing nothing so I want to measure that last uh, NAND line and that will be right here And I'm getting a 0.37, which I'm sure is normal. So next I want to measure the RAM lines. And I, I can identify the RAM lines by uh, checking where they would be on the DC or on the CPU here. So this looks like it would be one of the RAM lines. This looks like it would be another. This is probably 1v1 or 1v06. Just make sure the 14 doesn't have net names, and it doesn't. So this is 1v06, I'm guessing. This would be 1v8, I'm guessing. And this would be OV6, I'm guessing. So I'll check these three first. I'll probably check this one at this small capacitor here. I'll check this one at this capacitor here. And I'll check this one at this capacitor here. Or this one. So 1v8 was at this cap here. And that's 0.29. That's a normal 1v8 reading. And I was going to measure 1v06 here, but I, I remembered and realized that the RAM lines are all usually three capacitors right next to each other, and that tends to be the case on all iPhones. And my 1v06, or 1v1 on older models, models um, is usually right here, and that will give me like a, yeah, right here, 0 0.07. That's a normal 1v1 reading, or 1v06, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, OV6 should be something like 0.15. And I'm getting a 0.12. So that's all normal. 1V8, 0.29, 1V06 is 0 0.07. And again, that's beeping short, but that's a normal reading on any iPhone you would see on that line. And 0.12 is a normal reading on the OV6 line. So RAM seems good. So next. Well, not exactly next, but I'm going to want to measure all of these power rails coming out of the PMIC. But first I want to measure, um, or I want to check the boost coil. Maybe it's this one, maybe it's this one, um, to see if it's loose, because that's a very common problem on a dropped or physically damaged iPhone as well. And to find the boost coil, again, you know, this is a 14 Pro. I don't have net names, so I just have to go off of previous experience. 
And this is the shape of a boost coil. It's a 4x4 four four, um, IC, and that's one of the only ones I see here. So it's almost surely going to be it, but there are other ways to check that. Um, I'll have two lines that are main, two lines that are boost, and then two lines that are connected to the coil. And this might actually not be it because it looks a little strange. So here's main. I guess this isn't boost because this isn't the pattern I would expect to see. Unless they changed how boost works. Ah, this is almost surely it right here. So this is how I would normally tell what boost is, is by the pattern underneath it. And this is a pattern that makes more sense. So two lines on the corner connect to the coil. The next two lines are boost. And then the other side of the coil and the next two lines are main. Well, I guess not. I guess I'm wrong. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's the other side. So two lines in the corner are main, and this is absolutely main. Then the next two lines are boost, and then the next two lines are attached to the other side of the coil. So it's, I uh, forget what it's called. So this is usually more of a problem on the 12 series. Let's just see. if this is possibly loose. And no, it's on there firm. So that's not the problem either. So next I'm going to want to measure all of my power rails here. And honestly, normally if I see one of these power rails short, I'm going to see like a... I would kind of more expect to see a spike in the amperage draw. Some sort of spike, either high or just a quick low one. But it's still going to be worth it to check for a full short on any of these really quickly. And some of these are going to be low resistance lines so they some of them may beep short. But I'm looking for a full short right now not a partial and uh, these aren't partially short anyways these are just low resistance lines And everything's looking good so far. So I'm a little bit confused about what might be going on. Let's see if I'm getting any voltages, which I kind of don't expect to, but let's just see what happens when I put on good parts. So no amperage draw. I'm going to test for some voltages. But first, let's just see if we're getting voltage on main, which we should be, even at this stage, I would expect. And yeah, 4.39. Looks good. I'll check for voltage on boost as well. Should be right here. But no, 4.39, that's normal. Okay. I'm curious if I'm getting RAM voltages. And I am not. Okay. Check for 1V8 voltages. Actually, I'll just check for my voltage on my power button. 
That's 1.38, and I'd, I'd expect 1.8 there, actually. So it's a little low. 1.45 now. Okay. So it's the next day. This case, I'm going to change the PMIC. And I think that has a good chance of uh, fixing this device. Yeah, it was pretty damaged, but, you know, the motherboard looks fine. So, let's see how this goes. I think I'm going to be getting a new fume extractor soon uh, just because I think mine's not quite powerful enough anymore um, but also it's on my table now and I think it's causing a little bit of tiny bit of shaking and it's making it a little bit harder to focus under the scope You can see when my hand hits the table, it shakes quite a bit. And I've noticed lately I've had a little bit more trouble seeing clearly and I think that's what's doing it. So I have one pair of bent tweezers, which I, you know, I didn't do this on purpose. I just dropped it one day. Uh, but this is the one I use to remove CPUs because it provides a nice hook that I can just kind of grab right under these. And I provide just a little bit of upwards pressure while I'm heating it and this will just pop right off and it comes off very clean when I use this technique. So let's see how we go. And there we go, just pull it right off. And this little tool lets me pull it off so cleanly that like most of the underfill stays on the actual chip. And I don't even barely have to clean the board. So it's all on the chip still. Obviously you don't want to pull so hard that you damage uh, anything. So it's just like a by feel, you got to figure out what works best. And I do tend to heat this side more than this side. I don't want to damage the CPU. So these balls are a little bit less melted on this side. And everything looks fine. So I'll go ahead and reflow these pads with a better solder. I don't use low melt, I just use medium melt, 
So let's see if I have any difference in my amperage draw. And I'll let you guys see the DC power supply as I do this as well. And no, no difference. So PMIC was not the issue. So I'm a little bit stumped on this one. I don't really know what I'd expect to see if my crystals were bad. I don't normally see just stuck on nothing like this. I, I'll normally see something short and a spike on my amperage draw or I'll see something missing and stuck in brain dead mode. Um, but I'm just getting no power besides on main here. And it's really throwing me off to tell you the truth. So I'm still quite at a loss, but um, I have realized that before PMIC will turn on, Crystal has to be good. And uh, I took voltage on the capacitors that it's attached to, and, and those are normal. But it's still uh, probably worth it. I don't have an oscillator to just change this and just see if that's possibly an issue. Five, six, seven, six. I have a donor right here. I might as well just uh, just make sure. And crystal's never really been a, a problem for me, but I do know it has to be working properly in order for the PMU to turn on. So I think it's worth it just to, just to see.
but I think I'll just completely swap these and I'll also make sure my donor board turns on even if my uh, data board doesn't and that will just verify for me that it's for sure not the problem and that like the heat didn't also destroy the oscillator So I'll just test the donor board first, just because, just because. And I guess I'll be a little bit excited if this doesn't turn on, because that would kind of prove the oscillator is bad. I don't know why I feel like testing the donor first, I just want to. Okay, well, I'm getting zero amp draw and it's not turning on. And maybe the crystal's bad. Interesting. Unless I overheated the PMIC while I was removing it. Interesting. I don't think I have ever... I know I have never seen a crystal go bad in all of my years of doing data recovery. It's definitely something you're supposed to check, but it's not part of my routine because I've just never seen it go bad before. No way, it booted. So that's definitely something I probably should have checked first. Like I said, it's not part of my normal routine because I've just never really seen this go bad. Um, but the crystal, the crystal oscillator is needed for the PMIC to turn on. And, you know, I, I didn't really know the, the, the PMU, um, like requirements to turn on. And I actually watched uh, Edgar from iRepair or Yo Reparo um, real quick because I know he makes videos like this about like the power sequence of iPhones. And I watched one of his videos and I made sure and he said, you know, um, crystal oscillator is required um, before the PMIC will turn on. And that's great. This is turning on. And, uh, you know, big shout out to him. He's really good. Um, I, I'm not sure if I would have changed that if I didn't watch his video. So that's that's really great. That's really awesome. Um, so I'm gonna have access to this phone. I'm gonna have to put it into the jig, and uh, it, it needs the bottom board connected, or it will give me a three minute reboot. Um, but big thank you to Edgar from iRepair. He uh, gave me the idea to change the crystal oscillator here. Um, I just kind of did it just to see if it would work, and I'm I'm very happy to see that it absolutely did. And it makes sense, um, I had VCC main, I had VDD boost, um, I had my 1V5 line, I had voltage on my power button line, and still this phone was just not turning on whatsoever. It was doing nothing when I prompted it to boot, and it was just giving me no power. And no power at all, no power, not even a tiny little blip, not a tiny little spike. Is very rare. I almost never see that. If if boost is short, or I mean, I'm sorry, if uh, the boost coil is missing, um, or if I have a shorted power rail, I'll almost always see some small little blip. In the past, I've said that flat zero could indicate like a a, a boost coil or a shorted power rail, um, but in reality, it's almost always going to give me some tiny little spike. I used to have a a cheaper power supply, and it wouldn't give me this third digit. And uh, that's kind of where I got that idea from. I wouldn't always see anything because sometimes it was only just a very small blip and it would show up on that third digit or it would show up very quickly. And it was like while I was looking down, I'd see the spike and look up, I'd see nothing. Um, but 
I almost never see just completely flat zero and that's what I was seeing with this one so it was completely different than what I normally see. Um, I changed the PMIC just to make sure that it wasn't some issue with that but again nothing was turning on and now I know the oscillator is absolutely required for power to start, the second stage power to start at all and uh, if yours is bad then you will get no amperage draw whatsoever you'll just have your boost in your main and uh, I also had the 1v5 line um, but I learned a lot from this one so I'm very glad I saw this I'm glad I didn't just do a CPU swap because a lot of people will do that when they can't figure it out um, but, but by avoiding doing a CPU swap I avoid any potential mishaps that may happen with that and even more importantly, I learned something um, very important that, um, you know, I learned the I learned the power sequence of the PMIC, which I should have already really have known. It's just, like I said, I've never seen this issue before. Usually, I see a blip, and that means it's trying to turn on, but it just won't turn on. And if I, uh, you know... If I ever see this again in the future, I'll know exactly what to do. Um, I could just check boost and main, and uh, if I have voltages on those lines, but power, uh, but I'm getting no amperage draw whatsoever from my DC power supply, then I know it's going to be my crystal oscillator. So I'm happy I saw this one, and uh, thanks again to Edgar for my repair, and uh, hope you guys learned something from this one as well. I struggled a bit on this one because I wasn't quite sure what to check. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you stop by again and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.